football is not just about what happens on the pitch. Off the pitch, there's a growing trend of multi-club ownership, where one entity owns multiple football teams around the world. Manchester City, for example, is part of the City Football Group, which owns 13 clubs across the globe. Red Bull also owns five football teams in Europe and the Americas. And it's not just these big names, there are many other ownership groups with teams in different corners of the world. UEFA research earlier this year showed that there are now over 180 clubs worldwide that are part of a multi club structure, compared to fewer than 40 in 2012. This trend has prompted UEFA President Alexander Seferin to consider altering the rules to accommodate multi club ownership. But what does this mean for the future of football? The appeal of owning more than one club varies. Some clubs want to position themselves in different markets to have easier access to emerging talent, while others aim to diversify their investments and spread the risk across multiple teams. For example, the City Football Group has a number of clubs that feed into Manchester City, their main focus. Players signed by one of their 13 teams aspire to play for Manchester City, but may spend time being moved between partner clubs. But why are so many Belgian teams part of multi-club models? One reason is that Belgium has lower work permit requirements compared to other European countries, making it easier for players who wouldn't get permits in England to build their credentials in Belgium. Additionally, the cost of running a club in Belgium is lower than in France, and there are less restrictive permit regulations. Chelsea recently acquired a majority stake in French club Strasbourg giving them a foothold in Europe's talent pool and the ability to send their emerging players to gain experience in League One. This move also allows Chelsea to farm out their experienced players to Strasbourg to ensure they remain active. While multi-club ownership has its benefits, there are also downsides. Clubs can be relegated, leading to reduced income and player departures. Supporters may also feel that their club is only there to serve another team in the ownership group. There's also the risk of one team being barred from competitions due to links to another team in the same competition. UEFA has regulations in place that could see clubs being kicked out if they have the same people in charge. However, there is a precedent with RB Leipzig and Red Bull Salzburg, where UEFA cleared both clubs to participate in Europe because they were controlled by different management structures, despite being owned by the same parent company. It's unlikely that clubs in the same competition will be directly controlled by the same entity, as it could damage the integrity of the competition. But if enough separation between connected teams can be proved, we may see more clubs with shared ownership models in the future. Football is evolving not just on the pitch, but also off the pitch. Multi-club ownership is becoming more prevalent, and it's changing the way clubs operate and develop players. Whether this trend is positive or negative for the game remains to be seen. But one thing is for sure, the landscape of football is constantly evolving.